Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis, video number 11. Hey, we're still talking about measures of central location. And we have a special measure to talk about today, geometric mean. And guess what? It's the calculation you use when you're averaging or calculating the mean for percentage change numbers. And it's often used in finance. Now, the geometric mean is used to calculate the average compounding rate per period for percentage change or percentage growth numbers. This average compounding rate per period is the rate that can be used in multiplicative growth formulas to calculate the end amount from a beginning amount across equal time periods. In finance, it's used to calculate the average compounding rate per period for an investment. Now, these formulas look big and scary. But first, before we dive in and try and calculate this, let's learn what GR means, which is a percentage growth number or a percentage change number. And then let's learn what 1 plus the growth rate or percentage change number is called a growth factor. Now, here we have a data set with year, last trade day, and adjusted close for Microsoft stock price. So it starts in 1987, 23 cents. Yeah, that's the adjusted close on that day, all the way to 2021, where the stock was valued at 336 bucks. Now, we cannot use the geometric mean on this. We can calculate the average of the stock prices, but that would be an additive process where we add them up and divide by the count. What we're interested in is the percentage change. Now, we want to calculate percentage change. And I'm actually not going to use spill dynamic array formulas. If you want to see how to do that, that's off to the side. But I want to do individual formulas and copy it down because it'll help reveal the meaning of what we're doing better than if we do spilled arrays. Now, in video number three, we talked about the percentage change formula. We always take the end amount divided by the begin amount and then subtract 1. When I control Enter, I see that the stock actually went down by about 1.8%. If I copy this down just one row and then hit F2, I took the end stock price divided by begin minus 1. And in this case, it went up by 63%. If I copy it down a few more rows, look at that, F2. That percentage change formula says if we had bought in 1990 and just held it till 1991, the stock price went up by 121%. Now I'm going to double click and send this all the way down, all the way to the last row, F2. Sure enough, that formula is working. Now, once we have these percent growth rates or percent change numbers, that's where the geometric mean comes in. But before we do that, let's talk about what the growth factor is. Equals, we just take 1 plus whatever the percentage change was. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. By definition, the growth factor is what you need to multiply by the previous or begin amount to get to the next period or end amount. And to see how that works, let's recreate the growth factor. But this time, we're going to see if we can, from one period to the next, calculate in this cell the correct period amount, or from the calculations perspective, the end amount. So I'm going to take whatever the start amount was, or begin amount, times, in parentheses, 1 plus the percentage change for this period. Close parentheses. And by the way, this is a very famous formula. We use it everywhere in finance. And the math of this is simple. We use the distributive property and take previous amount times 1, so that 1 represents the full amount from the previous period. Then we take previous amount times the percentage change. That represents the change amount. And then when you add them, you get the end amount. When I Control Enter, I better get exactly the same amount. When I copy it down one row, 
Sure enough, I went from the begin or start amount to the end amount. When I double click and send it down, for every single period, that's one way to use this growth rate. Now, this formula right here, calculating the end amount from a begin amount, we have the individual volatile up and down percentage change amounts. But what the geometric mean will do is it'll take all these volatile rates and give us the true average compounding rate per period that we can use in a single formula to go from some begin amount to some end amount. And so that's what we're going to do. Now we have two formulas for geometric mean. One we use when we have all the individual growth rates. That's when we have this column here. The second formula right here, that's when you have the end and begin amount. Now this data set has all of the numbers we need for both calculations. But sometimes you're only given end and begin amount. That's when you use this formula. And sometimes you're only given the percentage change or growth rates. That's when you use that formula. Now for both formulas, we have to calculate number of periods. So I'm going to use the rows function to count for the percentage change amounts, how many rows there are. We could have used count here also. That counts numbers. Notice we didn't include the first period because there was no percentage change there. So when I hit Enter, I get 34 periods or 34 years. Now the other way we can do this, and this is going to be convenient many times when we're given the begin year and the end year, is we can take whatever the end year is, that's with the final end amount, and we subtract the year of the first begin amount. That's the period without a percentage change. And of course, when I hit Enter, I get the same number of periods. Now we want to calculate our average compounding rate per period. That's the geometric mean. In finance, they might call it average return. So if you have the growth rates, then we're using this formula. Notice it first needs to multiply all of the growth factors. Then we have to take the nth root, in our case 34th root, and then subtract 1. Now, in Excel, there's a square root function, but there's no 34th root function. So you have to remember from your algebra class that in order to do an nth root, the exponent has to be 1 divided by the number of periods. When you have a fractional exponent, that means you're taking that nth root. So if we wanted to do it the math way, we would use the product function. And most of the time, you do not have the growth factor column. You just have the percentage changes. So I'm going to 1 plus inside that number 1 argument, and then highlight all the percentage changes, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then close parentheses. Caret allows us to do an exponent. We need to force the division in 1 divided by 34 to happen before that caret, that exponent. So I put that in parentheses. And then we subtract 1. And when I Enter, that gives us the average compounding rate per period. Now, before we get to the other ways of calculating this, let's just see how this works. Because the definition, remember, the average compounding rate per period is the rate that can be used in multiplicative growth formulas to calculate an end amount from a begin amount. So down here, I better be able to calculate the very last value in this list if I make the formula equals whatever the first stock price was times, and we use a growth factor, but it's 1 plus that average compounding rate per period. Then close parentheses, and it's a multiplicative process that happens how many times? 34. So we raise it to the 34th power. And I better get 336.32 exactly as the data set contains down here. So that's one great use for the geometric mean. The other great use, of course, is when we're talking about the history of Microsoft stock, now we have something where we can say, hey, the average yearly return was 23.8%. All right, now this is the math formula. There's a built-in function called geometric mean, geo mean tab. And it also needs the growth factor, so we 1 plus 
all of these growth rates, close parentheses, and then subtract 1. So that's the formula we're going to use most often, rather than this one right here. When I hit Enter, I get exactly the same thing. Now, if you have the begin and end amounts, well, we're going to use this formula right here. Equals, and I need to force division before an exponent, so I say open parentheses, end divided by the begin, close parentheses, and I need to raise it to, and again, we need to force division before exponent. Since we're going to take the 34th root, we'll do 1 divided by 34 and then subtract 1. And that's this formula right here. And Enter. And that's pretty spectacular. Just from knowing the begin and end amount, we can calculate the average return over all of those periods. Well, there's a built-in function for this, and it's RRI. And notice it says returns equivalent interest rate for the growth of an investment. So this is really a finance function. But there's something strange about it when I hit Tab. Now, probably not many of you have done finance functions in Excel, but the argument PV means present value or begin amount. FV, that's the future value amount or the end amount. But normally in finance, we always have to worry about the direction of cash flow. Is it a minus or is it a positive? This is the only financial function of about 20 or 30 financial functions where we'll just put the numbers in and we don't have to worry about whether it's negative or positive. NPER, that means number of periods, comma, present value, that's the begin, comma, the future value, that's the end. And that's it. That's our formula for average compounding rate per period. Now, there's a big caveat here. We do not want to use the mean. And you will see some unscrupulous people sometimes in finance use the mean. If you use the mean calculation on these percentage changes, the mean will be bigger than the geo mean always, unless all rates are equal. Now let's calculate the mean, and then hit Enter. And then we'll do our formula again times 1 plus, well, there's the average, caret 34. And it's going to give us a gigantic number, completely incorrect. So don't do that. Now let's scroll down and look at another example. You read in your financial blog that a particular investment made in 1999, and in 2014, this was the final amount. And you're curious. You want to know what the average compounding rate per period was. Well, we come over here, equals RRI, number of periods, 2014 minus 1999, comma, the present value, the amount at the beginning, comma, and the future value, the amount at the end. And when I hit Enter, it looks like about 6.7% annual return. And we can prove this to ourselves. I'm going to take the begin amount times 1 plus our average compounding rate per period raised to the, and I don't have a cell, so I have to, in parentheses, repeat this subtraction. But when I close parentheses and Enter, bam, there it is. Now, percentage change problems are not always in finance. They're, in fact, everywhere. You read in an article, here are the four population growths from 2004 to 2007, and you're Curious, you want to know what the average population growth per year was. Well, we're given the rates here, so we use geo mean 1 plus the four rates, close parentheses, minus 1. And when I hit Enter, it looks like about 1.49% average population growth per year. Now, if you had the begin and the end amount, well, you could prove it. I'm going to say the prior year to 2004, that's the starting amount, times in parentheses 1 plus our just newly calculated average compounding rate per period, close parentheses, and then raise to the, in parentheses, we have the year, so we subtract. And when I hit Enter, 
There we go. All right, that was a pretty exciting video with geometric mean. Remember, when you have percentage change amounts or growth amounts, we're not going to use average. We're going to use geo mean. And it gives us great power from a list of percentage change amounts or from a begin and end amount. We can figure out what the average compounding rate per period is. And then we can use it to make calculations like figuring out what the end amount should be or just talking, hey, Microsoft's average return over the last 34 years was about 23% per year. All right, next video, we'll talk about percentiles and quartiles. We'll see you next video.